It's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Everything that you do that is spiritual, worship, prayer, evangelism, living in holiness, is by the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it on our own. But here's the good news. The scripture says that the same spirit who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. The same Holy Spirit that was upon the life of Jesus, the same Holy Spirit that moved the prophets of old to make prophetic declarations from heaven, the same Holy Spirit who moved the psalmist to write poetic stanzas of worship, the same Holy Spirit who anointed the apostles in the early church, that same Holy Spirit who hovered above the face of the deep and caused creation to occur when the word of God was spoken, that same ancient and powerful Holy Spirit dwells in you. And here's the even better news. You have just as much of the Holy Spirit as Paul the Apostle had. You have just as much of the Holy Spirit as Jesus had. You have as much of the Holy Spirit as all of the prophets had and every servant of the Lord mentioned in the scripture. You have the Holy Spirit living within you. It's not a matter of how much you have of the Holy Spirit, but of how much the Holy Spirit has of you. It's not about how gifted you are, how intelligent you are, how spiritual you are. It's a matter of how surrendered you are. Catherine Coleman said that God is not looking for golden vessels. He's not even looking for silver vessels. He is looking for yielded vessels. Who is the Holy Spirit? He is our helper. He is our advocate. He is our teacher. He is the one who helps us to pray, helps us to worship, helps us to understand the Word of God. And I want to complete this two-part lesson today here on Spirit Church. With me, as usual, is Stephen Moctezuma. He's going to lead you in worship, and then we're going to get right into this lesson. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom And if you're tired and thirsty There is freedom Oh, if you're tired and thirsty There is freedom And freedom reigns in this place. Oh, showers of mercy and grace falling on every face. There is freedom. Oh, freedom. mercy and grace falling on every face there is freedom freedom reigns oh freedom reigns in this place showers of mercy and grace Oh, falling on every face, there is freedom, there is freedom, there is freedom, there is freedom. Of mercy and grace, 
Who is the Holy Spirit? Number one, He is God. Number two, He is heaven's greatest evangelist. Those two uh, points I covered last week. Now I want to cover number three, the Holy Spirit is your masterful teacher. Now remember, we're getting a lot of our scripture from the book of John. And here we're going to read John chapter 14, verses 17 and 26. And then I'm going to read John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. John chapter 14, verse 17 says, He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive Him because it isn't looking for Him and doesn't recognize Him. But you know Him because He lives with you now and later will be in you. John chapter 14 verse 26 says, But when the Father sends the Advocate, there's that word again, as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. So according to John chapter 14, verse 26, the Holy Spirit reminds and He reveals. I want you to say that aloud. Say, He reminds and He reveals. John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15 say, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Now I want to read another scripture found in Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 20. It says this, You sent your good spirit to instruct them, and you did not stop giving them manna from heaven or water for their thirst. Also in 1 John chapter 2 verse 27, the scripture says this, but you have received the Holy Spirit, and He lives within you, so you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know, and what He teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as He has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. Now, when I first got saved at the age of 11, I had this hunger to know Jesus. I would search the scriptures and everything within me wanted to know more and more about the person of Jesus. And to this day, that hunger has only grown. I want to know everything I can about him. I want to know everything I can about the Father. I want to know everything I can about the Holy Spirit. And this is why I emphasize teachings on the Holy Spirit through this ministry, because there are comparatively speaking to teachings that are available to the Father and the Son, not that many teachings available upon the Holy Spirit. And again, relatively speaking. So at the age of 11, I begin my prayer life. I begin seeking the face of Jesus. I get into the Word. And as I'm looking to Jesus, as I'm trying to find as much as I can about the Lord in Scripture, I found that I hit roadblocks. I found myself reading Bible verses and not comprehending at all what the Scripture was saying. In fact, and maybe you've been here before, in fact, I would read the Scripture. Let's say I was in Matthew chapter 28, and I would go through Matthew chapter 28, and by the time I got down to the last verse, I would pause and realize I didn't really receive anything that I just read. And I would get on Bible reading programs. Many of you know of those well, year through the Bible programs, but the truth is that it really doesn't matter about the quantity of the scripture that you read if you're not comprehending what you're reading, if you're not receiving what's being given to you. So I tried the Bible programs. I tried the scripture memory techniques. I tried reading sometimes 20, 30, even 40 chapters a day. Yes, that's possible to do. And I found myself just tiring my mind exhausting my emotions, becoming discouraged at the fact that I wasn't receiving what I thought I should. I would go through scripture and I would read a verse and it would encourage me. And then I would go and see a preacher 
take that same text and pull out treasures and hidden gems from there that I never even saw. And I thought, Lord, how is it that I miss so many things that so many of your other servants are seeing? And this holy jealousy began to rise within me. And I said, Lord, I want to know your word. I want to understand the scripture. I want to understand the teachings of Jesus. I don't want to just comprehend them mentally. I want to receive them spiritually. You know, you can tell when someone is teaching you from their mind to your mind because it tires you. And then sometimes people will preach from their spirit, but you don't receive it in your spirit. You only receive it in your mind and it tires you. When someone preaches from their mind to your mind, it tires you. When they preach from your spirit to your mind, it confuses you. But when they preach from their spirit to your spirit, it it, it livens you, it brings you to life, it refreshes you, it excites you, it interests you, and something inside of you develops that is the hunger for the Word of God. The Holy Spirit gives you a desire for the Word. You just have to ask Him. Just ask Him now. Say, Holy Spirit, give me a desire for the Word of God. Give me a desire to understand the revelation from Scripture, and He will do it. So I struggled, and I found this Scripture in the book of James that told me, if any of you lack wisdom, he should ask God and God will give it. And so there I was, 11 years old, I said, Lord, I don't have the wisdom to understand the scripture. I don't have the wisdom to steward the treasures of revelation. I don't have the wisdom to uncover spiritual truths, not with my carnal mind anyway. And so I prayed, Lord, give me, I ask in the name of Jesus, wisdom from on high. And I remember it was like something came to life in my mind. My, my mind was lit. I felt like before there was dimness, there was darkness. And when I prayed that, Father, enlighten me. Father, show me the truth. The Holy Spirit came alongside me and he shined a light where there was once darkness. The Holy Spirit reveals the Word of God. He reminds us of what Jesus has taught and he reveals things. How? Through his Word. But how is he supposed to remind you of something that you've never heard? How is he supposed to remind you of something that you've never read? How is he supposed to be reveal the truth within the words of Christ if you're not reading the words of Christ? How is he supposed to reveal the truth of the word if you're not reading the word? The Holy Spirit works with you. We must do the possible so that God can do the supernatural. We must do the difficult so that God can do the impossible. If we will do the practical by opening the word, disciplining ourselves to seek Jesus through the word and focusing on the scripture before us, then the Holy Spirit will come alongside of us and do the supernatural and bring forth revelation from the word. And so when I prayed that prayer, things changed for me. And I remember it was like overflow. When I opened my mouth, the word of God would come out. When I opened my mouth, there would be wisdom coming forth. And it wasn't coming from me. It was coming through me. And people who knew me began to comment. They began to say, something about you is changing. There seems to be this wisdom on you. And to this day, that's what people describe. And I'm not trying to compliment myself or boast. If anything, I'm boasting in what the Lord has done. People will say, there's a wisdom on you beyond your years. I'm only 27 years old. Well, by the time this airs, I'll be 28. So, wow. But anyway, I'm only 28 years old. And people say, you know, for your age, you know the word of God so well. I can tell you the secret is that it's not me, it has nothing to do with my intellect. It has only to do with the Holy Spirit. It has only to do with my yielding to his guiding and to his teaching. So this is the difference between knowledge and experience, which is the difference between revelation and information. The word becomes an experience when the Holy Spirit breathes upon it. Information informs, revelation transforms. You can know that God loves you, but knowing that God loves you and experiencing his love are two different things. You can know that Jesus gives life. You can know that mentally. You can know that in your mind. But experiencing the life that he gives is completely different from knowing that he gives life. In the same way, knowing the information intellectually from the word is different from experiencing 
what that information is describing. The spiritual experience, that divine connection between the Father and creation, the knowledge of who Jesus is, the passion that is fanned within your heart, the flames of love that begin to burn within your soul, that cause you to seek Jesus in ways you've never sought him before, that cause you to know the master in ways you never knew you could know him before. That is the difference between experience and knowledge, and it's only by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to teach you the Word. So that's number three. The Holy Spirit is our masterful teacher. Number four, the Holy Spirit is an ever-present comforter. So John chapter 14, verses 15 through 18 say, If you love me, obey my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. The Holy Spirit does not leave the believer. If he does, hypothetically speaking, leave the believer, then that person is no longer a believer because the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us the power and the revelation in order for us to believe. So to say that some believer doesn't have the Holy Spirit is a contradiction in description. You cannot describe someone as a believer if they don't have the Holy Spirit. For if they have not the Spirit, how will they believe? He is the one who works the belief in us. So if you in your heart are struggling... If you in your mind are wavering back and forth, if you in your soul find yourself in a war between what seems to be two natures that are still alive in you, what seems to be two natures, then you need to experience the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. He is there to comfort you. He is there to still the soul. He is there to calm the storm. He is there to address your fears. He is there to bring upon you peace that passes all understanding. He is our ever present comforter. He is alive, he is active, he is powerful, and he is present in our lives. He does not leave you. So many believers I talk to, they address me in fear, saying, Brother David, I committed a sin, or I believed something that was ungodly, or I misrepresented the scripture, or I said something that I regret. And time after time after time, I will tell them, if you sense the conviction in your heart, if you sense this sorrow and brokenness over your wrongdoing, it can only mean that the Holy Spirit still abides within you. For He is the one who works godly sorrow. He does not leave you. He abides to comfort you. He has not left you abandoned. And they always say, but Brother David, you haven't heard my situation. I got to tell you how evil what I did was. I got to tell you exactly what I said. I got to tell you exactly what I thought. I got to tell you exactly what I did. And only after they have told me their whole situation in detail, and then I tell them the same answer, do they receive it. But don't wait for me to hear your situation. Don't wait for someone else to listen to the the, what you would think is the most evil thing that anyone has ever done. Just trust the word of God when Jesus said that he will not leave you. I will not abandon you as orphans. He'll never leave you, Jesus said. He's with you. He's in you. He's abiding. When you commit a sin, who do you think is there convicting you over that sin? It's not yourself, it's not your flesh, it's not the devil. The very fact that you feel sorrow over mistakes, the very fact that you feel sorrow over sin is proof that you belong to God. The very fact that you feel convicted about something that you did is proof that you still belong to God and that the Holy Spirit has not left you. Just because you don't feel Him near all the time doesn't mean that He has ever left you at any point. Don't rely on your feelings. Faith is based on fact, not on emotions. Emotions go up and down and up and down, but faith never wavers because faith is based upon the sure foundation of the promises of God. And He promised, I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said of the Holy Spirit, He will never leave you. He is an ever-present comforter. He is patient with you. Whether you need comfort because of mistakes you have made, or whether you need comfort because of heartbreak, or whether you need comfort because you feel alone. 
I know many of you watching this right now, and perhaps it's you. You feel alone right now in this season. You feel so alone and you're saying, Lord, I am abandoned. Lord, nobody cares. Lord, nobody understands. He understands. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. This is what the scripture says in Psalm chapter 34, verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The Holy Spirit is not going to leave you. He is your friend. He is your comforter. Number four, the Holy Spirit is our ever-present comforter. Number five, the Holy Spirit is a mighty intercessor. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 27 say, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. The Holy Spirit is interceding for you. Let's read that scripture, but I want to take my time with it. I want you to really look at what the scripture is saying and receive it. Let Him teach you. Here's the first lesson in receiving Him as the masterful teacher. Let's look at this verse, but let's take our time with it, okay? Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 27. I want you right now, before we read it, lift your hands and say, Lord, help me receive this. Give me a mind and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. What does it mean to have the Holy Spirit as a mighty intercessor? Well, first we see that He helps us in our weakness. In other words, He makes up the difference. He helps us in our weakness. When the scripture says this, it's not just, Paul is not just committing himself to speak about prayer when he writes, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. He gives that as an example. In the verse it says, for example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But he starts that by saying, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. In other words, the fact that the Holy Spirit helps us in prayer is just one example. Prayer is just one way the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. But the Holy Spirit intercedes or fills in the gaps or stands in the middle of for us because of many reasons. And it's not just to do with prayer. He helps us in our weakness. Where you lack, He fills. Where you are weak, He is strong. Where you surrender, He guides. Where you obey, He blesses. Where you give, He multiplies. The Holy Spirit makes Himself available for us wherever we are weak, wherever we lack, wherever we pull back from. He makes up the difference. The Holy Spirit makes up the difference. Have you ever been in a season where you weren't that spiritually disciplined, where your prayer life was lacking, where your devotion to the Word of God was lacking, where your worship was lacking, and maybe perhaps there were even some sinful habits that begin to find their way back into your everyday life, and you're just going through, we'll call it a spiritual slump. You're just in a place where you're saying, I'm not doing good spiritually. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, one day you'll wake up, and there's this fresh desire to begin praying and reading. And all of a sudden, you feel the chains breaking off. And all of a sudden, you feel like worshiping. And all of a sudden, you feel like reading the Word. And all of a sudden, you feel like praying. Again, it's not about feelings, but what I'm talking about is grace and mercy. And there is just this, how would I word this? There is just this fresh wind that blows into your life out of nowhere. And you come out of that spiritual slump, and you look back and you say, I didn't really do anything different. I didn't really work to gain that. That's the mercy of God. That's the Holy Spirit making up the difference. You see, He is so faithful, He is so merciful, He is so kind, He is so patient, that even when we find ourselves in that spiritual slump, and we're not doing anything to get ourselves out of it, He won't leave us there for long. 
The Holy Spirit is faithful even when we are not. And he'll come alongside and he'll see us in a spiritual slump and he'll give us his strength. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we'll wake up that morning and we find ourselves refreshed and we find ourselves back in the word and we find ourselves back in prayer. I'm just being open and honest with you. The Holy Spirit has helped me in that way many times where I'm reading the word, but it's not connecting or I'm worshiping, but it's not, I don't feel the connection or I'm praying and I, I just, I'm not sensing that spiritual breakthrough. And then out of nowhere, after weeks of that, the Holy Spirit will just breathe upon me and I'll feel refreshed. That's the Holy Spirit interceding. So the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. When you don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit's praying for you. When you are weak, the Holy Spirit is praying for you. I used to go, and to this day, I'll still go, if there's a man of God in town, or if there's a man of God that the Lord tells me to visit for the purpose of the laying on of hands and impartation, I will find myself in that meeting, I'll find myself in a prayer line, and I'll tell the man of God, lay hands on me, I need the impartation. I believe in that. But people will travel for miles to have men of God lay hands on them. I have people flying in from out of the country to be in a service for two hours. And then they go back home because, and I'll say, why did you come? And they say, well, first they want the presence of God. But then they ask, can you lay hands on us? And of course, they're not coming for me. They're coming for what God gives through me. And I thought, that's amazing that people will do that. And I've, I've done it before. I've driven hours to go be in a service and have someone lay hands on me. And we do it all the time from conference to conference, from event to event. But think about this. For all the men and women of God who could lay hands on you and impart something powerful, there is one more powerful still. The Holy Spirit Himself intercedes for you. The Holy Spirit Himself prays for you. Verse 27, And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. In other words, the Holy Spirit works with us to cause us to be one with God's will. You know, prayer is the process of becoming one with God in will, in action, in nature, in purpose, in every single way. Prayer is the process of becoming one with God. And when the Holy Spirit intercedes for you, the scripture says, He pleads for us in harmony with God's own will. In other words, He prays for us in a way that causes us to become one with God's will. And I want you to really think about this because this is powerful and I don't want you to miss it. The Holy Spirit intercedes for you and prays for you and His prayers for you conform you to the will of God. He prays for you to be one with God's will. Pleads for us in harmony with God's own will. That's powerful. The Holy Spirit prays God's will to be done in your life. Finally, number six, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes Jesus real. John chapter 15, verse 26 says this, But I will send you the advocate, there's that word again, the spirit of truth. And I say there's that word again, I'm referring from last week's lesson where I went over with that word advocate meant. The spirit of truth, he will come to you from the Father and will testify all about me. When the Spirit of truth comes, now I'm reading from John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever He receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever He receives from me. Verse 14, I want you to read this. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit magnifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit vivifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit makes Jesus real. It was by the power of the Holy Spirit because remember, Mary was with child and the conception was brought about by the Holy Spirit. It was by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Word was made flesh 
It was by the power of the Holy Spirit that God was formed into a man. Incomprehensible God becoming a finite man or being placed into a finite body. Now I can elaborate on that for quite a while, but I want to get to the point here. The Holy Spirit is the one who caused the Word to manifest. The Holy Spirit makes the Word flesh. The Holy Spirit makes the Word relatable. The Holy Spirit makes the Word visible. The Holy Spirit makes the Word tangible. The Holy Spirit takes all that Christ is and He reveals Jesus to you. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal Jesus in a vivid and intense way before the eyes of your heart. He is the one who makes Jesus real. Now, of course, Jesus exists without the Holy Spirit. Jesus is real all on His own. But the Holy Spirit makes Jesus real to you. In other words, the Holy Spirit makes Jesus personal. Think of the woman with the issue of blood who moved the crowd. She reached out and touched Jesus. Jesus turns to the woman and says, or turns to the disciples and says, who touched me? I felt power flow out of my body. And the disciples say, Lord, what do you mean who touched you? Everyone in this crowd touched you. And he said, no, somebody touched me. I felt power go out of me. The difference was that woman touched him in faith. So while everybody else was touching Jesus, they didn't receive from him. Only the woman did. In that way, the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to the one who seeks him. Others may be standing in the same church service. Others may be watching this video. Others may be listening to the sermon. Others may be, find themselves in the same circumstance that you find yourself. But the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals him. Other people will miss it because they don't have the Holy Spirit. It'll go right over their heads. They cannot receive except by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes Jesus real. So, number one, the Holy Spirit is God. Number two, the Holy Spirit is heaven's greatest evangelist. Number three, the Holy Spirit is our masterful teacher. Number four, the Holy Spirit is our ever-present comforter. Number five, the Holy Spirit is a mighty intercessor. And number six, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes Jesus real. Wow, wow, wow. I'm, I'm telling you, when I was teaching that, I felt the anointing. And I know that the Holy Spirit wants to reveal Jesus to you. Let's pray right now. And there's so many things we can pray for. So let's just pray that we would become surrendered to the Holy Spirit. Because here's the truth. You can, some people, they stress about these sort of things. When they see all these things that they want, they become a little stressed and overwhelmed. Like, okay, how do I get them as teacher and intercessor and comforter and the one who reveals Jesus and the heaven's greatest evangelist? And how do I know him as God? Okay, look, it's very simple. All you have to do is surrender to the Holy Spirit. When you surrender to Him, you get all that He is, all that He has to offer, all of His benefits. Just surrender. Give up those things that God's been telling you to give up. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one receiving this prayer now. And I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you give us your Holy Spirit. Help us to receive Him, Father. Lord, I pray for that one receiving now. Let them walk in your anointing. Lord, I pray that you would search the heart. Cause us to know the depths of Christ and be known by you, Father. Search our hearts, Lord. Know us and remove from us everything and anything that would keep us from drawing closer to you. I pray this by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Touch that one receiving now. Fill them with fresh power, with fresh anointing. We receive you, Holy Spirit. Be to us all that you want to be. Give to us all that you want to give. I surrender all. I want you to say it. Say, say I surrender all. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say it. If you agree, say amen. Well, that's it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say it because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you could join Spirit Church, what I call the Spirit Family, then go ahead and use the information at the bottom of the screen to go and become a member of Spirit Church. Now to your comments. This is from... 
the first part of the lesson I just taught, titled, Who is the Holy Spirit? And this was from one of two. You just got done watching two of two. Here's the first comment from Rohina Roya, and they write, Thank you. People ask questions about the Holy Spirit, and this teaching answers it all. I am a born-again believer. The video really helped. I also save your videos offline, and they answer nearly all of my questions. Thank you. God bless you and your ministry. Much love from Pakistan. Well, we send our love all the way back to Pakistan. We love you, and we are praying for you. Andrea Williams writes, I needed this. God told me to study the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for this teaching and making it easier to understand. Nancy Joseph writes, Thank you so much, Pastor David. I just finished watching Who is the Holy Spirit? and it has enriched my thoughts and knowledge about the Holy Spirit. Another commenter writes, Hi David, this is truly a wonderful message about the Holy Spirit and why we need Him in our lives. Every time I go through trials and tribulations, watching your videos bring me back to confidence, to the confidence, and lets me know that I am not walking alone. Jesus is with me throughout the pain. Thank you very much for your lovely teachings, and I wish you hold a prayer meeting in India soon, God bless you, brother. And that is from India. Kevin Suresh writes, Beautiful teaching, Pastor David. I really love how you share the gospel on the Holy Spirit. You help people realize how the Holy Spirit works in our lives and about His divinity. It's really true that the Holy Spirit personally helps us at every moment in our life, making us more holy and closer to the Lord. God bless you. Also writing from India. Final comment from Ann Varveris. Thank you, David. I fell from your prayer feeling the Holy Spirit anointing. We get those emails. People do experience the slaying power of the Holy Spirit while watching these videos. And that is it for the comments. I want to now challenge you. Give to this ministry. Help us to take the gospel all around the world. We are very, very close. Don't turn off the video. Stick with me here. We are very, very close to finishing our goal, our fundraising goal. Here's where we are in the ministry expansion project. Once we reach our goal... That means we have enough monthly partners to move into our own facility where we will hold meetings, where we will have studio audiences, where we will broadcast live, and ultimately we'll be able to put out more media and plan more events. Also, this is important, when we reach that goal, we're going to be able to hold more events in more places. So you're seeing me and you, you, we get many comments writing, come here, Brother David, or come to this city, or come to this nation, or come to this state. Well, we need funds to do it. Help us get there. Let me tell you something. We are all about winning souls. We do two things and keep it very simple. We win the lost, and we edify the believer through media and events. It's just that simple. Help us continue to do this. I'm telling you, support this ministry. Become a monthly partner. That goal chart that you just saw was in regards to our monthly partner. We need more $30 a month partners. And I'm telling you, you're going to help us. We're going to win millions to Jesus. You watch. I truly believe that this is only the beginning. And those who partner with us, you're going to be able to say, I was with that ministry from the very beginning. I was with it from the beginning years. Look, we're just getting started. You're going to see millions of souls reach the media, and you're going to see thousands attending these events. There is going to come a day where you're going to see stadiums filled with people, and thousands will come forward to give their hearts to Jesus. It's what God showed me, and I know you're going to be a part of it. So do that today. Become a monthly partner or give a one-time gift. You can either partner with us or give a one-time gift by clicking on the link that's just about to appear at the end of this video. Wait till the end of the video. That link's going to appear. Click on it, make a one-time gift, or become a monthly partner. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on Encounter TV. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.